To void or not to void? Inevitably, this question comes up for students after a rough MCAT experience, where maybe you just weren't feeling your best, or there was a lot of unfamiliar content, or you ran out of time on a few sections. But just because it was a rough experience does not necessarily mean the best decision is to avoid. In this video, we're gonna talk about when to avoid and when not to avoid your MCAT exam. Let's start with an important question. What does voiding mean on an MCAT exam? Voiding your score happens at the end of the test. There'll be a screen that pops up that looks like this and says, do you wish to have your exam scored? Yes or no. If you say no, you're voiding your test, which means you will never receive a score for that day and that exam. The good news is medical schools will never see that you took this test. They'll never receive a score or even a report that you sat for the MCAT that day. The bad news is that it does count towards your total attempts for the MCAT and you do have limits on those attempts. You're only allowed to take the MCAT twice in a calendar year and four times over two consecutive years. You're also only allowed to take the MCAT seven times in your lifetime. So even though schools don't see that attempt, it does count towards these numbers. The other catch is that you'll never see your scores either. You'll never know how you did and there's a possibility that even if that test felt hard, you did hit your goal score and now you have to pay for and study for another exam experience. So voiding is not to be taken lightly and you should have a clear decision of when to and when not to void your exam on test day. Let's go through that decision together. Before we even get to test day, the first thing you wanna ask yourself is do I feel prepared? When should you ask this question? Either 30 days or 10 days before your test date because these are the deadlines to reschedule your exam. Rather than take it when you're not ready, I highly recommend considering rescheduling your exam for later on when you do feel prepared. If you're at that 10 day deadline, which is your last day to reschedule or cancel your MCAT, you wanna ask yourself, do I feel 75 or 80% ready? If so, you're probably ready to take the MCAT. But if you're hitting 50 to 60% confidence that you're ready, it may be worth rescheduling your exam to a later date and preparing further. That way you don't even have to make the void decision that we're talking about in this video. Once you've committed to taking your exam and you're within 10 days of test day, now's the time to consider your void plan. First, is this your first time taking the MCAT? If it's your first official test, generally my recommendation is to score it. If you've prepared well and studied hard, it's almost always worth it to score your test and see how you do. I'm not an admissions expert, but from everything I've seen, you will not get penalized at all for taking the MCAT twice and improving on your second attempt. So scoring this first attempt can give you valuable information on how you performed on the real thing to help you make a more targeted retake plan. That's the worst case scenario. The best case scenario is you perform great on that day, you score it, and you don't have to take the MCAT again. If this is not your first MCAT, then it's important to have a more structured void plan. This is because we really wanna see improvement between attempts, and as a retaker, you're probably more aware of the factors that are affecting your test day performance. So you'll be able to tell if test day is going well or not so well in the moment based on those factors. Things like timing strategy and focus can really impact your performance, and if you can tell in practice when a test is going well, then you can feel more confident scoring it on test day. However, if some factors are leading to a poorer performance, things like lack of focus, panic attacks, or missing questions due to timing issues, then it may be important to avoid that test and try again at a later date. The other reason to avoid your score, whether you're a first time test taker or a retaker, is if there were something catastrophic that happened on test day that prevented you from performing well. This can be things like a fire drill or an evacuation in the testing center. Maybe your computer froze or died. Unfortunately, that happens with technology and you lost some of your progress. Maybe the clock froze on your computer and it didn't track your breaks or your sections properly. Maybe you weren't feeling well, you had a migraine, you were ill, you were nauseous, or you had a panic attack that prevented you from focusing effectively. The other catastrophic issue would be if you miss more than 20 questions across the whole exam. I don't mean guessing, I mean truly missing, like you didn't put a single answer. Any of these reasons would be a good reason to avoid your exam as it's not setting you up for a successful test score. On the flip side, when should you not void your exam? If it just felt hard. The MCAT is challenging, and so it should feel hard at the end of the exam. 
So if you get to that void page and your brain is mush and you feel exhausted and you're like, that was a rough exam, that doesn't mean you perform poorly. In fact, you could have performed really well because you gave it your all on that test day. So try not to give in to temptation on that void page because if it was hard for you, it's hard for everybody else. And this is a scaled test. Just because it's hard does not mean you perform badly. I hope this video is helpful. Make sure to create your own void plan before test day. Feel free to put any questions you have about this in the comments and I'll be happy to answer. Remember to subscribe to this video and check out my practice exam mini course to help you review and prepare for test day. See you in the next video and happy studying.